In this video, you'll see how to enable end users to launch Amazon EMR clusters using AWS Service Catalog. With AWS Service Catalog, you can make your EMR platform self-serviceable, reduce the EMR learning curve for your users, and ensure adherence to security standards and best practices. Amazon EMR is a managed cluster platform that simplifies running big data frameworks, such as Apache Hadoop and Apache Spark, on AWS to process and analyze vast amounts of data. As an administrator in AWS Service Catalog, you can provide EMR as a self-serve Extract, Transform, Load, or ETL platform at scale while hiding all the security and network configurations from end users. To see what this solution might look like in an organization, let's navigate to Service Catalog. In this sample organization, we have already created a portfolio containing a variety of predefined EMR clusters for data engineers. As you can see, two service catalog products have already been set up for users. Let's select the EMR ETL engine for executing Spark and Hive jobs. Here you can see that a CloudFormation template was used to create all the required AWS resources for the types of ETL jobs performed in the organization. In this case, two product versions have been provided. Next, let's see how an end user can use these products to submit an ETL job for processing. As a data scientist, let's navigate to Service Catalog to provision an EMR cluster for an ETL job. First, we'll specify a name for the provisioned product and then select which version we want to use. In this case, we'll use version 5.29.0. Next, we'll specify the cluster parameters. For our purposes, we'll start a Spark ETL job using a script that's been placed in an Amazon Simple Storage Service, or Amazon S3, bucket. Optionally, users can be allowed to add tags to EMR clusters they create. Users can enable provision product event notifications to be streamed to an Amazon Simple Notification Service, or Amazon SNS, topic. Let's review the settings and launch the product. While the EMR cluster is provisioning, let's switch back to the administrator's view of the AWS console. As you can see, the EMR cluster provisioned by the end user is initializing. Here you can see the cluster is waiting on another Spark or Hive job to be requested, indicating that the user's job is completed. You can also see other parameters associated with the EMR cluster, such as tags that were specified by the CloudFormation template. You can also see and review the networking configuration settings. The security and access parameters for the EC2 instances were automatically assigned through the CloudFormation template for the cluster as well. Here you can see the hardware used by the EMR cluster. You can also view or modify cluster scaling policies. Setting these policies can reduce computational costs and help track the computational resources being utilized. Here you can see that the task node of the cluster has been assigned an auto-scaling policy. You can edit the policy from here. You can choose to make auto-scaling more or less sensitive, or you can increase or decrease the threshold to trigger auto-scaling. Let's leave these parameters as they are. On the Steps tab, you can see events corresponding to computational jobs performed by the cluster. This step corresponds to the Spark ETL job requested by the end user. You can expand this step to see the job parameters specified by the end user. Now that the cluster has provisioned and the job is completed, let's switch back to the end user's perspective. The end user navigates to the S3 management console to see the data output. This is the S3 bucket containing the logs for the EMR cluster, the ETL job scripts, and the output for the Spark job. Let's open the Spark folder to see the output. We'll select the first data output to ensure the script worked. Right from here, we can extract the records in Parquet and generate a preview before writing back to Amazon S3. This preview incurs a usage charge. The reviews have been successfully generated from the ETL job. Now let's return to Service Catalog to submit another job to the same cluster. 
From the Update page, users can change any of the parameters they initially set for the provisioned product before submitting the new job. Let's use the same EMR version we previously selected. Because we are updating a provisioned product, the same cluster will be used for the job. This time, let's use Hive as the ETL job type and modify the job parameters accordingly. While the cluster updates, let's return to the AWS console as the administrator. You can see here that another ETL job was submitted on the same EMR cluster. The second ETL job has now completed. Let's return to the end user's perspective and view the data output associated with the Hive job. The Hive script we ran reads Amazon Reviews data from Amazon S3 and discovers the top toys based on customer ratings. Let's go see the results. This time, we'll preview the data in CSV format. Here you can see the top toys by Amazon Review Score as tab separated values. You've just seen how to enable end users to launch Amazon EMR clusters using AWS Service Catalog. Thanks for watching. Now it's your turn to try.